Fly direct to Washington, D.C. from Augusta Regional Airport. The Live Piper 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Tracking showers and thunderstorms on Live Piper 6. I'll let you know well that will go and what impacts to expect coming up with Piper 6 forecast. Right now, on News Channel 6 and 4, a disturbing discovery in a Grove Town dumpster. We'll have live reaction to that investigation. Plus, a human trafficking investigation is also underway in Grove Town. We'll have a live report on the case. And a new Georgia law to keep students safe when they get on the school bus, as your news at 4 starts now. Live from Television Park, this is WJBF News Channel 6 at 4. Everybody, I'm Brad Means. And I'm Jenny Montgomery. Thank you so much for joining us. Coverage you can count on begins with the investigation into a dead fetus found in a trash can at the Walmart in Grovetown. Hannah Latier spoke with law enforcement and witnesses. She's live at that Walmart this evening. Hannah? Jenny, an investigator with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office tells me the fetus was miscarried and then the mother and father notified Wellstar MCG Health after it was disposed of in a trash can in the Walmart parking lot. Wellstar then contacted the Sheriff's Office and deputies and other first responders arrived to confiscate the fetus at around 6 p.m. The investigator says the family was cooperative and based off conversations, he believes this miscarriage caught them off guard and they panicked. The fetus was not old enough to survive outside of the womb. He says it looked to be nowhere near the 24-week-old mark. There are not many regulations in Georgia regarding how to dispose of a non-viable fetus. So now law enforcement is investigating and trying to see if there was criminal intent. I talked with one woman who was there in the moments after the fetus was found. There were tarps being placed over the trash can and I immediately wanted to try to document and find out what was going on. Regardless of whatever your situation is, you can always bring a baby or a deceased fetus to the hospital or give it a proper burial. The sheriff's office is working with the GBI to do an autopsy on the fetus. And investigators say if you find yourself in a similar position, to contact your doctor or 911 before disposing of the fetus. Live in Grovetown, Hannah Latier, WJBF News Channel 6. And staying in Grovetown, an investigation underway after a woman told police that she was a victim of human trafficking. Officers have arrested 36 year old Joe Lewis Hills Jr. Bria Smith, live now with more on this case. Bria. That's right, Brad. Well, I spoke with, you know, neighbors in that area who were in complete shock after hearing about what has happened in their neighborhood. Houses down from their own home. Police say on Tuesday afternoon, a woman showed up at Grovetown Police Department claiming she was being held against her will. Police say the victim reported that she had been picked up in Macon, then brought to Savannah, and was now staying in a Grovetown home off of Grove Landing Way. The woman called a ride service to assist her to get to the police department. The local FBI field office was contacted and dispatched, and an agent assigned to human trafficking, uh, a trafficking to assist. Neighbors say neighbors who lived in the area for several years are in disbelief today. Immediate shock, uh, immediate disgust. Um, fear, concern for the young lady and hope that she was okay. Disbelief. Um, they've been living in this neighborhood since 2019, maybe. My son graduated from Grovetown High. The kids walk the street, um, all ages. There's parents out here with their puppies and their babies, husbands and wives, single. Um, young people are always in groups and clumps. Um, they come by and sell their, their stuff for school. It's a military neighborhood. So I'm um, just really shocked. Coming up at 6, I'll have more on why Hills Jr.'s family contests these charges and law enforcement believe that this human trafficking case might have something to do with an even larger one. For now, reporting live in Grovetown, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. All right, Bria, thank you so much for that report. A drowning investigation is underway in Augusta. It happened last night at a home on Westfield Drive that's off Sibley Road. When deputies arrived, they found a juvenile unresponsive in a pool. An autopsy has been scheduled. Another death investigation.
investigation underway in Augusta after a man was found dead in a homeless camp off Davis Road. Coroner Mark Bowen says the victim had been dead for at least several days. A name has not been released. It is time now for a look at the weather with meteorologist Miller Hyatt. And yeah, the rain's coming down in full force right now, Miller. Yeah, that's right, Brad and Ginny. We've got you up here in just a few minutes. Brad and Ginny. All right, Miller, thank you. A new Georgia law increases penalties for drivers who pass stopped school buses. And today, Burke County is reminding drivers to follow that law ahead of the first day of school on August 5th. Kim Vickers has more. Well, school buses are statistically the safest way to get kids to and from school every day. But when other drivers don't stop when they're supposed to, it puts the students' lives in danger. In that law, Eddie's Law, House Bill 409, uh, came about because the eight-year-old Adeline Pierce was struck and killed by a motorist while she was loading the bus in Henry County earlier this year. In 2019, the Burke County School District began tracking violators illegally passing stopped school buses. There have been 964 citations that have been issued. This is not the full amount of how many actually ran the stop sign. That number exceeds 1,200. But the ones that were actually cited because it was proven to be a sure violation was 964. Now, thanks to Addie's law, drivers who do not stop for school buses will have to pay up to $1,000 in fines. The school district wants to remind drivers in the county that the school year is starting soon and to follow the law. When you see a school bus stop loading or unloading students, please be sure to stop. In 2010, Jaquan White was hit by a driver when trying to get on his Burke County school bus. I remember waking up that morning and I was going to the um, bus stop waiting for the bus to pick me up. And after that, I just went on like an out and waking up in the hospital that morning. My left leg had to learn to walk again. Now, White is a school bus driver for Burke County. He tells me it bothers him when people don't stop for his bus. Angry. Like, when I, I see them, I have my lights on, ready to pick up. I'm wondering if they're going to slow down or not, which some of them do, some of them don't. Both the district and Burke County law enforcement believe that these new fines will make a big difference. Like most people, uh, including myself, I just don't have a thousand dollars to have to pay out the points on your driver's license, the your insurance rates. That, that monetary fine is what's going to really get everybody's attention. For more information about Addie's law and the consequences if you don't follow it, just head on over to WJBS.com. In Waynesburg and Vickers, WJBS News Channel 6. Well, the wait continues to find out if the marble tiles on the municipal building in Augusta are safe. Commissioners were told back in April that they needed to do an emergency bid for an x-ray inspection of the building after one of the marble tiles broke loose. An engineering report said the potential existed for one of the tiles to fall off the building. Instead of an emergency inspection, though, this project is just going out for a regular bid, and some leaders say they don't think the delay is risky. We check the building weekly. We're making sure that, you know, we don't have any loose tiles at this point where it's hanging off the building. If so, we would immediately have those removed. So right now we're in good shape. Um, we're getting the bid put together now. So hopefully in the next few weeks that bid will be out and uh, we get some people to bid on it and then come, come back and get that done. Commissioner Sean Franham says he thought the emergency inspection had been approved and he says he wants leaders to talk about this again at their meeting next week. Still ahead, the president is set to address the coming up Columbia County leaders talking about village rates in the area. We'll have the breakdown on the recent meeting when we come back. Weather headlines on WGBF News Channel 6. Brought to you by Hickson Roofing. If your roof needs fixing, call Mr. Hickson. Imagine the big vacation is finally here and it's time to head to the airport. Imagine the crystal blue water, the white sand. Work will be the farthest thing from your mind. Imagine missing your flight, the injuries. The only vacation you'll get is at home, in pain. George Sink Injury Lawyers has seen most every kind of accident. We've helped thousands of people, just like you, get the help and money they need faster. Call all nines now. That's one time. No, it's coming down hard right now. It is. The Columbia County School Board approving a rolled back millage rate at their meeting last night. The superintendent talking about it. He presented the new rate of 17.10, lower than last year's 17.20 rate. 
Tonight was the final hearing for our millage rate uh, that the Board of Education has to approve every year. Uh, this will be the fourth straight year that they've been able to lower the millage rate. Uh, now we're down to 17.1. They went down a tenth of a, a percent. Uh, we were at 17.2. And, uh, and so that's good news. Uh, so we're looking forward to continuing uh, the work with the budget this next year. The first day of school in Columbia County is August 5th. Coming up, a fun event to bring the community together in Aiken. What to expect? Well, we'll have the story for you after the break. Why buy? Learn more at woundedwarriorproject.org slash together. The CSRA is full of amazing women. Women who inspire. Women who innovate. Women who lead. That's why News Channel 6 brings you Women to Watch. On the last Wednesday of each month, News Channel 6 recognizes local business women who are making a positive impact in our community. Nominate someone today at WGBF.com. Sponsored by Goodwill. game is bringing former CSRA athletes out for a good cause. It's called Juice Hoops, and it happens this Saturday morning. Starts at 9 o'clock at First Baptist Gym in Aiken. The event's going to feature big basketball action along with music and vendors. I grew up in foster care and stuff like that, so I've seen how people come from rough places and things. So what we like to do, man, we like to give scholarships to families and stuff like that. Yeah. Help. And see, can we help me um, give them a little push-up, man, to get out of the communities and stuff that they came from and try to experience the world and yeah. stuff like this. Young Hope's events like this will bring the community together. For the full interview and ticket information, just go to our website, wjbf.com. There's a lot more coverage you can count on at 4.30. Including Israel's Prime Minister, Ben.